Hello and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast is our tactical debrief for Aston Villa 2, Wolves 0. So on this episode, we're going to go into detail. We're going to have a look at the stats. We're going to have a look at the tactical pad. We're going to go to some still images from the game and have a real in-depth look at what actually happened behind Aston Villa 2, Wolves 0. But before we get started, we don't really go into managers' quotes too much on the debrief. But when we feel like we need to have a little bit of like a deeper dive into what two managers have said, then we will potentially do that on the debrief from time to time. So we're going to hear a quote from Unai Emery first. I don't like the word pressure. Pressure, for instance, is what teams are feeling to avoid relegation or even in everyday life. The real pressure is what every family feels to get income to raise a family. We don't have pressure. We have an opportunity. Boom! Absolutely love it. The man is an absolute philosophical, tactical, human being genius of a guy. I absolutely love him and he grasps it, he gets it, he understands it, he understands us and this football club and I just think he's absolutely fantastic. And I'll go back to when I was hearing Neville on... Sky talking about Manchester United after they just scraped through Luton, and he was saying that oh, United are coming now. We're gonna Villa are gonna start feeling the pressure, and Spurs will feel the pressure of United now. And then United go and lose the next game. And I just think Unai understands what it takes to win, and I think he's really grasping the Premier League now and that might sound mad but I truly believe that he had unfinished business in the Premier League and he wanted to come back and he really wanted to succeed and you know you hear managers that will try and take the pressure away from the players at times but Unai doesn't even bring an ounce of pressure to our environment whatsoever. So whenever we go on the pitch, there's always an opportunity. And to be fair, that's how I am as a Villa fan. I'm very positive. I don't. I never look for negatives. Or even now, like you know, I'm still having a little gander at the top of the table. Oh, how many points are we behind third? Because, like Unai saying here, there's no pressure, and we've got opportunity. So, gotta believe. So, absolutely love it. So we will now go to some quotes from um, Gary O'Neill on his performance of his wolf side. We may hear an ounce of salt in Gary O'Neill here. We were the better team by a long way in the first half an hour. You could sense they realised how good we were. The numbers we produced was a good effort. 99 times of 100, ain't nori, is a goal. If we had Cunha, Huang, Neto, we turn XG into goals. The higher possession, higher XG. You add Pedro, Neto, Cunha to that XG, and I'm sure it would have mattered. Okay, ifs, buts, excuses. But what about if Villa had Mings, Buendia, Kamara? What what if Villa what if Villa had those players? What if Villa had the players that we've been missing all season? Could Villa have done better this season? Is that what it means? So, very weird comments. Very, very salty. And I just think you see one manager who creates a no-excuse culture. And then we've got another guy who is just creating excuses and reasons why his team didn't win. So, you know... (laughs) They've got injuries, so have we. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, moving on to Unai Emery now. We've got another quote from Unai Emery, who was speaking about Ollie Watkins. He told us that he could play on, and the doctor said not to take any risks. We will scan him tomorrow morning, and hopefully it will not show a lot, but I don't know. Glimmer of hope for me is that Watkins wanted to play on. If he wanted to play on, Surely that would tell me that he feels fine to play on. So I'm taking a glimmer into that. So those are some of the manager's quotes. Some quotes are better than others, but, you know, that's just where we are. Table never lies. Right, so let's go into some of the stats then. 
and we'll have a look at some of the stats from the game. So here we've got Wolves with 52% possession, <clears throat> Villa with 48% possession, Villa 11 shots, Wolves 13. Wolves 3 on target, Villa 5 on target, Wolves 7 off target, Villa 4 off target. We had two blocked shots, they had three. We had five corners. We had 19 free kicks. So again, that kind of tells the tale of the scrappy nature of the game, that we had 19 free kicks. They were like, kicking us off the park at times. Seven throwings for Aston Villa. We had two big chances. We missed two big chances. We had one counter-attack. Passing stats, we had 488% passing accuracy. We had 439 87% passing accuracy. We had 55% dribble accuracy. We won 54 of our duels. They won 53, so Villa won their duels. Tackles, we had 16. They had 24. Interceptions, we had four each. Clearances, they had 12. And Aston Villa had nine. Most important stat of the day is that Aston Villa remain inside the top four. Three points clear of Spurs. Goal difference is slightly better now for Aston Villa. We've two. Interestingly, before the game, we were level on points, level on goal difference, and Spurs were ahead of Villa because of goals scored. So Spurs had scored one more goal than us, and we'd had conceded one less than Spurs. So it's neck and neck. Goal difference is important. The clean sheet was very important as it was edging towards the end of the game. I was thinking keep this clean sheet because I showed you when we played Spurs, all of our metrics are very, very close in absolutely everything this season. So it's going to come down to very, very small, fine details. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little look at some of the still images from the game and we'll have a look at some of our observations on what we made of the game against Wolves then. So Emmy Martinez, monster, monster save. Absolutely brilliant. Trademark that spider save now because that is Emmy Martinez at his best. One area that I didn't like about this chance was the overload on the back post here. So we've got a bit of an overload. We've got again an area which I'm fed up of talking about is why we have players that aren't goal side of attacking players. Like ain't Nori here. Why is there not a Villa player? Why is Bailey not inside there? That is really, really frustrating. And that's where this chance comes from. But Emmy Martinez had to save us. An area of Villa's performance that I was really impressed with was our creativity on free kicks and set pieces. Now, I know some of you will probably be thinking, why are we taking so long on these set pieces? And why are we doing weird stuff? I absolutely love it. These little touches on the ball and then a player runs around and then it's all about sort of biding your time, players creating havoc, players moving around, disrupting that Wolves line. So, you know, it's absolutely brilliant. And Dougie Louise and Leon Bailey for our set pieces were just so creative. I absolutely loved it. But here we've got another creative one. And you can see that this is part of the plan. You can see that Diaby has been told to stay back and stay on the edge of the 18-yard box. So we've got Douglas Luiz, who pings a nice little pass into Leon Bailey. Bailey fizzes a ball across the 18-yard box, and it finds Moussa Diaby, who winds and cranks that left foot up and hammers it into the, the, the back of the net. So really well worked set piece. And Austin McPhee needs massive, massive credit because his set pieces were brilliant against Wolves. Creative, fun, fun to watch the set pieces were. So fair play to McPhee. And also fair play to McPhee because when we were defending the corners, we looked more switched on and you could see what their tactic was. We've conceded a few where they go to that back post and then they get nodded across. You can see that's what Wolves were trying to do. And Villa played that really, really well. And I think Carlos is massive when he's in that back line because he adds that little bit more aggression for Aston Villa. Really wanted to highlight the substitutions, and I wanted to highlight Zaniolo because I thought Zaniolo was terrific. He was a driving force for Aston Villa. 
We saw quality. We saw him getting into attacking areas. And we're starting to see the confidence with Zaniolo as well. So this was on the touchline. Zaniolo and Luca Dean work this area really nicely. Um, and we don't really come out of it with the ball too much. But then what happens is our absolute wrecking ball comes steaming in. <laughs> the, re the wrecking ball comes steaming in as backup. It's like Zaniolo's come on. And he's like, he's bought his bit of muscle with him. And they're both like, right, we've got to get stuck in here. We've got to make this a derby. They've all been chatting in that bottom corner about, about what we're going to do when we come on. And Zaniolo's gone, if I lose out on one, I want you to come steaming in. So Duran comes steaming in on Doyle. And then Zaniolo backs his mate up. He backs his mate up and starts driving forward with the ball. And then from nowhere... We just see Ezri Konsa off shot, steaming down that right-hand side to get on the end of, of a pass from Zaniolo. And then he clips it in. And it's one of them where he's like, he's like clipped it and it's sort of got a bit of whip on it. So instead of going to this area here, it's sort of gone the opposite direction over there. And it's a wonderful, wonderful finish over the top of Saar. Uh, and I, I just really like that goal because... I think it's it just it's got a bit of personality that goal. It's got a bit of it's got a bit of swagger. It's got a bit of muscle. It's got a bit of desire, and it's finally got a bit of quality at the end. So absolutely love that, especially from Zaniolo and Duran. Um, fair play to them. And then Duran, he weren't he weren't finished, was he? He weren't finished. He had to get one more slide tackling, and he <laughs> he won this ball here. And, and we created an opportunity. I think it was this the one where Zaniolo had a shot. Um, but yeah, I think this might have been where Zaniolo had a shot um, and it went into Sars' hands. But, you know, Duran, he's an absolute nightmare, isn't he? And he's a real, real handful. He has got to watch these yellow cards because one of these yellow cards is going to quickly turn into another yellow card and it's going to turn into a red card. So we, we have really got to watch this with Duran. But... He came on and made a massive impact on the game. So fair play to Duran because you know he, he was he was really good. You know, he was really good. Him and him and uh Zaniolo were, were brilliant. So fair play to those two. So we'll have a little look a bit more tactically now. Um, we'll have a look at some of the areas that I picked up on. One area that I think Wolves have been doing well this season, and they were doing it against Villa, is this sort of three block. So teams can sometimes go into like a mid block and a low block. But what I'm starting to see from Wolves is their shape. He's, he's like a, a, a three block. So as you can see here, it's really interesting to see. So what I'm seeing from Wolves in this little in this little three block is they're blocking out zones here. So they're blocking out passing lanes to players. And I've seen them do this quite a lot. And it's quite effective in the way that it shuts out the passing lanes for the opposition players. So that, that was one observation that I had from the game. I thought that they did really, really well. But another player that I thought stood out for Aston Villa was Morgan Rogers. And again, we're starting to see a bit of consistency now from, from, from Morgan Rogers. And, and I think it was his best performance in a Villa shirt getting into those attacking areas. He he showed his strength. He showed his dribbling attributes. And I just think he was a real threat for Aston Villa. And I think if the ref if the ref had have done his job and carded the players that were, were, were pulling him back, because one of them was really a real cynical foul and he didn't get carded. And I think Rogers was bringing out the best out of Villa in those moments. So shout out to Rogers. We have a look at some of Rogers' stats. 70% possession. He won eight of his 12 ground duels. Five out of his five dribbling attempts was successful. We've got, he lost possession four times. He made one tackle and he, was, he dribbled past three times. So Morgan Rogers' stats were very, very good. <clears throat> if we have a little look at Rogers' heat map here. You can see him getting into those attacking areas, but you can also see him doing that defensive work quite well as well. One criticism I had when he played for, against Luton was that he was leaving Moreno slightly exposed. But against Wolves, his defensive work was really good. I remember one time on the touchline, 
that he managed to to win the ball back for Aston Villa, and Emery was just applauding him and and, and giving him so much praise because you know he. In this Emery system, it has to be fully functional and every player has to be a key cog to get us sort of working. So Rogers was absolutely fantastic. If we stay on this then and have a little look at some of the other players' heat map, we've got Tienemans, who I thought had a really, really strong game in the middle of the park. He's doing really, really well. It's a little bit like when Kamal got injured and we wanted... McGinn, McGinn went in there and McGinn does a job and then Tienemans can go in there and Tienemans can do a real good job. We've got Konsa getting into an attacking area as well. We've got Leon Bailey tearing up that, that right-hand side. The RB here, there and everywhere. Bit of a quiet game for Ollie Watkins. So, bit of a quiet one. Luis, absolutely everywhere. Moreno in an attacking area. Pau doing his defensive work and Carlos doing the same. And Martinez, Martinez is in that little bit of that sweeper-keeper role as well. So, fair play to Martinez. Best player for Wolves was number 20, Tommy Doyle. He, I thought he was really, really good. Um, a real, real good player for them. Um, getting them ticking. Turning to Perlo the first 15 minutes, I think. But, you know, once we got to grips with him as well, I thought, I thought we started to, to look really good. So, Doyle was good for Wolves. Uh, and then finally, we'll just have a little look at the passing network. So this is the passing network for Aston Villa. So a really good network, to be honest. If, if Again, it's one of those where if you want to look at Villa on a piece of paper and you want to see what we're all about and how we play, then this is the image to watch, basically, because you see the three at the back with Pau, Carlos and Conza. You've got Tielemans, who is a little bit more advanced. He's not really screening Conso, he's actively playing as sort of a CDM. We've got Douglas Louise in the double pivot. So the double pivot cannot be on a straight line. They have to be on a sort of on a diagonal. We've got Morgan Rogers sitting in there helping out for when Moreno goes forward. We've got DRB Watkins up top. And then we've got Leon Bailey off in the width out wide. So, you know, if you want to have a breakdown on Villa's formation and how we play, let, just look at that. And then we've got the Wolves. We've got the Wolves passing network, so you can see that they are slightly on that little bit of a, 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 a of a diagonal of what I was saying. So that's that sort of diagonal shape blocking those balls going into those areas or, or vice versa. It's a little bit asymmetric. You know, I guess they'd want a little bit more shape through here. They'd want a little bit more of a focal point through there as well. So you can see that Villa are really pushing them back on that side, and that's the side that we've got DRB, we've got Bailey, so that, that's the side that I guess we, we, we are pushing them back a little bit further, so all in all, a very, very good professional performance from Aston Villa, I think I've got through absolutely everything there, yes I have, right, so yeah, big performance, massive for Aston Villa, massive for where we are, Eight games to go. We've got a big game on Wednesday now against Manchester City. Um, I'm going to watch Man City Arsenal today. Can't wait for it. Going to be a huge game. So we'll have a little look at how Man City are going to set up. And then we'll bring you the match preview for Man City tomorrow. And we'll have the opposition preview out on Tuesday. So enjoy your Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Have a real good day. Enjoy it. Soak up the Villa content. Soak up the Villa happy vibes and up the Villa. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, if you've got this far and you haven't subscribed. If you want to see more content, we are getting quite big on TikTok now. So we're becoming a bit of a TikTok, you know, doing all right. Guy came up to him and was like, oh, mate, I've just started watching your TikTok. So I'm like, oh, do you watch the actual channel? And he's like, nah, what you want? And I'm like, mate, watch it on YouTube as well. But yeah, TikTok, it's going off on TikTok. Um, so yeah, have a good one, everyone. Up the villa.